Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video going through my entire process to set up a plane on this thing here. This is my FreeSky X18S running Ethos version 1.3 as I'm making this video. Uh, there are a couple of things extra that you need to do as well as go through the standard setup wizard. And I'm going to go through all of my basic settings for setting up a fixed wing model, including things like setting your throttle cut, adding expo, adjusting the throws, setting your fail safe. I'll put time codes down below. Now this video is really aimed at those of you that are pretty new to the radio or pretty new to setting up fixed wing. Now I have a complete series of lots of tips and tricks on ethos and these style radios from FreeSky. Link down below. Go and check those out. There's a lot more stuff that you can do here. This video is just about the steps you need to go through to do the basic setup for a pretty basic fixed wing. Now the fixed wing we're going to use is this one here. This is one of the Tundra family from Hobby King. It's a Cub style model. The Tundras, with the exception of the Micro, all fly incredibly well. And they're a great plane to learn to fly on if you want something that looks like a conventional plane as opposed to something out of an Avengers movie. But stay tuned, I'm gonna set this thing up we're going to go through each individual step. I'm not going to miss anything out. And by the end of it, it will be in a state where you're ready to go to the field. Word of advice, whenever you are doing anything around a model and you're going to be plugging in the main flight battery into a model, always, always, always remove the prop. Even if you don't think you're going to be running the throttle, occasionally bad things can happen. So my top tip for this, particularly if you're new to this, is always remove the props. Whenever you're working on a model on the bench, it will just save you from picking up a couple of extra scars. So the majority of the setup can be done here on the radio before we get to the plane at all. However, if you do have the plane handy, there's a couple of tips and tricks that you can use to make the setup that we're about to put on this radio be pretty perfect straight away. And that is by using one of these things. Now you don't have to do it this way, but this is a little servo checker. You plug five volts into it in servos, and then you control using this little knob here, the PWM value that goes to the servo. So what you would do is plug each of the servos in for the ailerons, elevator and rudder or whatever the controls are on your particular plane. And you'd move the control until you found out what the middle channel value is. Knowing that allows us to set that up here on the radio so that when we plug everything and power it for the first time on the model, it's gonna be pretty spot on. The only thing we're gonna to have to do really is just make sure the throws are right and the direction of the controls are okay. Now. If you don't have one of these, it isn't a disaster because actually you can do it iteratively. We can tweak it on the plane. The other thing that I'd recommend that you use is something like this. This is a little five volt battery eliminator circuit, plugs into the flight battery and creates five volts. This is incredibly useful for not only powering your servo checker so that you can power the servos to do those tests, but also it's fantastically useful to be able to do things like power the receiver so that rather than you having to plug the throttle in Register. you can do it like this from this little battery eliminator circuit set the servos up and that's going to sort you out so i would recommend having those two extra pieces if you don't it isn't a problem now i've gone through my model and written down what the middle channel values are for my aileron elevator and rudder so i know what the numbers are you ideally want the numbers to be within 1400 to 1600. If they are more or less than that, then I would probably remove the servo horn from the servo and put it on in a different position so that you get it that. On mine, the rudder is a little bit low. I potentially would actually go and do a little bit of work mechanically on the connection. However, this will still work fine. So the first thing we're going to do is power on our radio. Welcome to Ethos. Let's create a new model. So we're going to go into the model menu and we're going to go into model select and we're going to click on the plus icon to create a new model. It'll ask us what kind of model we have. We're going to pick airplane and next. And then we're going to answer each of these questions. It only has one motor. 
it does have ailerons but only one channel that means there's only one connection for it and it does have flaps now i'm not going to set up flaps in this video i'll put a link down below that actually shows you how i set up flaps again using the trick of using a little servo checker to make sure that they're set up perfectly now all you're doing here is you're just making sure that the little graphic at the top looks like the model we're going to have a traditional tail and yep that looks like what it is it's one channel for both the rudder and the elevator and we'll give it a name uh, let's call it tundra enter we won't put a picture right for now and there is our model set up now the model wizards at the moment and this is version 1.3 i think at the moment for ethos um, they might be slightly different when you watch this video but a couple of key things that we need to change before we go and play with any of this and we need to be in the mixer to do it so we're going to go in the aileron stuff first we'll double click it and we'll select edit and what we need to do is first of all add some exponential to the control that's going to make the stick less sensitive about the middle position it's a great idea to do it i'd recommend about 25 percent for things like the ailerons and elevator and about 15 percent for your rudder so we're going to click where it says curve we're going to click by that and click on expo and then we'll increase that number and you'll see the diagram change we'll, we'll put that up to about 25 percent so the next thing we'll do is we'll just go through each of them with the elevator again we'll edit the elevator and what we'll do is we will add the expo in again again elevator i would put about 25 percent the more the post the more you put in the less sensitive it is it doesn't affect the complete movement it just means that there's a little bit less sensitivity around mid stick and that can make a model easier to fly we're not going to do that on the throttle but we will do that on the rudder edit we'll add the expo i put less on a rudder i put about 15 percent and then we're in good shape now the only thing i would do here in the throttle is edit the throttle and add a throttle cut now the names of this to me seem the wrong way around i would go into throttle hold and then click on the switch say always on switch position and then move the switch into the position that you want the throttle to be disabled my throttle disable is on that switch there it's been that one ever since i've been flying so that's how we want it and then what you can see here is with the switch in that position the red line is actually at the bottom of the, of the graph so as i move the throttle it doesn't increase until i flick that switch and now the throttle has a linear output and even when i'm flying if i flick that switch it drops down now there is also um, throttle cut which is i think more useful for things like glow engines um, and things like that for electric systems i would set it up like that so that's a lot safer so that's all we need to do here the next thing i'll do is go into outputs and this is where we can use our magic little bit of paper first channel is aileron and we can set the center position of the channel now the cool thing is up here in the top right hand corner is the actual number that is being put out at the moment it's 1500 by default as i change this number i want to get that number in the top right hand corner to be the middle position that i saw and what i'll do is i'll work my way around elevator was 1585 so i'm going to go down again to the center sub trim and i'm going to increase that number so up here where it says microseconds it says 1585 close enough and then finally we'll do it on the rudder as well the rudder needs to be 1361 which is again a little bit too far away for me i would probably reset it but for the purposes of this video let me just change it so that it's about right there we go so now the middle channel positions are also the same as this little piece of paper again we could do that exact thing that we've just done there setting the center position when we're actually at the model so now we've done that all we need to do now is then bind the receiver so go into internal module 
select the system that it's on, enable it, and then go through the standard stuff. You're going to register and bind the receiver. Again, I'll put my video down below that takes you through the entire thing of that. The only other thing I would do, and we'll do it when we've got the model, is also set your fail safe. I would set yourself fail safe to be custom. And what you can do here is we can actually tell the radio, uh, the receiver, what it needs to do when it loses connection. So I would not do hold, that's incredibly dangerous. I would do custom, and then I would just make it so that it's what the current value is. And I'd work that for the elevators, custom, yep. And I'd make the throttle, custom, just clicking this little thing by the side, and there we are. And then the rudder, custom, there it is. So hopefully now when this loses connection, it's going to go all the neutral positions as they are right now, and then also it's going to put the throttle at a negative number, and that hopefully should make it a little bit safer. So let's go to the bench and we'll actually plug the servos into the outputs, matching the standard mixer setup. So aileron into channel one, elevator into channel two, throttle, and we're not going to plug in because we're going to power everything from the battery eliminator circuit, and then rudder into channel four, and we can finish the setup. Just check the direction and throws and make sure that the failsafe works. So now we have the receiver connected, let's just power it using the five volt BEC that we had before. We can plug it into any of the outputs that aren't going to be used. Now we've already figured out that AET are the first four, flaps will be the fifth one. So I can plug it into any of those. I'll just stick it into channel eight. Observe the polarity, the polarity is written on the side. So you have the plus and minus and also the signal, which is kind of that little kind of uh, boxy shape. So that's how we need to do it. So let's power the receiver. Let's turn on the radio. Welcome to Ethos. And there we are, we're all green. So we're in a good shape. Now we need to start plugging the controls into the receiver. Now the way it works is many models, like this one from Hobby King, uh, will have little tags. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. It says aileron. Um, which makes it really easy to plug in. So what we're gonna do is let's just do the ailerons first because it's gonna be the same process for all of the control surfaces. So let me just move everything around here on the table. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna plug the aileron servo cable because we know that that's where it plugs in. So if we look in the mixer, it tells us ailerons are channel one. We're gonna plug the aileron into channel one. Again, following all of the pieces, there we go. So now, if I just hold the wing and move the controls, you can see the aileron moving. We can see it there. Two things we're looking at. First of all, is it in the right direction? As you push the stick to the left, this one needs to come up, and as you push it to the right, it needs to go the other way around. This is the wrong way, this is backwards. So that's easy to sort out. What we're gonna do, we're gonna go into outputs, click on the aileron channel, and we're going to click on invert. And now when we push the stick to the left, this side comes up. However, it's moving quite a lot, probably too much for the plane. Now, the throws, which is what this is called when you're setting up a model, is probably going to be in the manual. So to change the throws, we can do that very easily. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come out of here. We're gonna go into the mixer. We're gonna go into the aileron mixer and edit. And then we're gonna go down and we're gonna find where it says weight. At the moment, it says 100. I'm gonna drop that down to about 60%. And we'll try the movement again. And what you're doing is you're looking so the movement matches whatever is in the manual. It'll typically be a number of millimeters up and down. And you need to change this number until you're happy. And you can see the diagram will be changing as well. Once you're happy, then we're in a good place. So we'll come out of that. Now, the aileron has matched up beautifully because we did that middle channel value using the little trick here because I've got it written on a bit of paper. However, if you don't have that, then all we do, if it wasn't lined up with the perfectly with the rest of the wing. Then the way we'd fix that, we'd go into outputs, go into the aileron, and then again, use that 
center sub trim section to just tweak that to be whatever it needs to be so it all lines up. Now what we have to do is go through each of the controls in turn. So let me plug in the elevators and the rudder and we'll do the same thing. So I've now plugged the rudder, which is this piece here, and the elevators in. So let's do the rudder first of all. Again, this is a Mo2 radio. So the middle channel position is pretty much spot on. And that's because again, we use that little trick. However, the direction is wrong. So we're gonna go into outputs, into the rudder channel, and we're gonna say we want it to be inverted. And then surprise, surprise, it's gonna be the right way. That looks about the right throws. So you know what? We're gonna leave the throws in the mixer as what they are. Last one is the elevator. So if I pull down the elevator stick, the elevator should come up and they do. And I'm happy with those throws as well. Again, we would change them. So that is pretty much set. So the only last thing I do is as a very final thing is I would remove the prop from the model and then plug the ESC into the throttle channel and then just make sure that the throttle works as well. That is how I would set up a plane. It isn't particularly tricky. Most of the stuff is done on the radio. It's literally, if you do it this way, you come to the plane and all you're doing is checking whether the directions of the controls are in the right direction and the throws are right too. And once you've done that, you're in a good place. The only last thing I do is with the prop still off, turn off the radio with the receiver on and just see what happens. So for example, if I have my control surfaces in a weird position, let's put the rudder over here. Let's check the fail safe is working. Let's turn the radio off. The radio will ask you to confirm, say yes. And there we go. The receiver goes back to the default position, which is what is set fail safe. You need to do that and also make sure that it turns off the motor. And at that point, we're ready to go to the field. So that's the whole process. At this point, it's ready to go to the field and to fly and to trim using the trim buttons on the front of the radio. So hopefully that's helpful for those of you that are interested in this. Personally, if you don't have a servo checker for the 10, 15 pounds, 10, 15 dollars it's gonna cost you, I would go and get hold of one, particularly one with a little display like that. It is worth its weight in gold. It's handy for when you're setting up basic models like this. You don't need it, but it's handy. But when you get into more complex models that have specific PWM values for things like dropping landing gear down, setting up things like flaps, then knowing exactly what those numbers need to be so you can set them up in the radio is worth its weight in gold. It means that you accidentally can't overdrive a servo and snap a hinge. So thanks for watching. Again, links down below to those uh, other videos in the series. And as always, happy flying. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.